Excalibur aircraft. What is it? It's a wide body, two seater experimental aircraft with a useful load of 650 pounds, a cruise speed of 90 miles per hour, and you can build it from a kit. All right, I'm back here in Sebring, Florida. I stopped by Excalibur aircraft to give you a bit of a tour. I'm Tom Carr at Excalibur Aircraft Company in Sebring, Florida, the Sunshine State, and we're here today with the Experimental Aircraft Channel, and they came all the way to Florida to talk to us, see how we make the Excalibur, which we've been doing for 25 years, by the way, in this same location. So we're going to take you step by step, show you the materials we use, and the step-by-step -step procedure for making the aircraft, which comes to you as a 51% kit. So you'll be glad to know it's actually a quick build kit, and there are no parts to make, and there's no welding to do. We've got Nikki Voorhees here. She's in charge of production, and she's just our pride and joy. She's just dropped dead gorgeous. Say hello, Nikki. Hi, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Back to work. So we're gonna show you everything as Brian wants to do step by step. Okay, at Excalibur Aircraft, since we're an FAA pre-approved home-built kit, we use all aircraft grade materials. Now that includes 6061T6 aluminum materials that's certified by the way. We get certification on all the equipment, all the tubes that we buy for the aircraft. Now behind me you see various sizes from two inch diameter tubing all the way down to half inch diameter tubing. Now this tubing arrives from the mill in eight foot length. So, uh, and that's some sizes, but most of them come in 12 foot sizes. So as you can see here, most of these are all the 12 foot sizes. Now we also use 2024 T3, which is an aircraft grade. And some of these tubes are the 2024 T3. And then on other parts of the aircraft, such as the landing gear, everything associated with the landing gear is chromoly steel and we TIG weld that, which is required for aviation. So there's no welding to do. When we get the tubing, there are many different sizes and there are different lengths. So this is where we cut the aluminum and the steel tubing to the various sizes. Now on the fuselage, there might be seven or eight different sizes or lengths of tubing that we have to have. And we have a stop that we set up. So as we cut the desired length, then we just go tube after tube after tube and they all come out exactly the right length. Then we can change the position of the stop and then cut the next size and so forth. And then we have various places around the facility here where we bend each individual tube the way it should be bent and then we go into the next phase, which is drilling the holes and this sort of thing. So this is where we start with cutting the tubes in the various lengths that we're going to use. Yes, we have a total capability here for machining any and all of the parts that we need to make. Now we have a milling machine over there behind you, and this is our uh, lathe that we're very happy with. It's a DRO uh, operated lathe. And these are some of the parts that we make here. Uh, we make many, many, many parts of different sizes and shapes, but we can do everything here. We can be independent, so we don't have to count on outside suppliers to provide parts for us. We can make them right here in-house, and you know we're lucky enough to have all the equipment that we need to do that. Okay, many of the tail sections are made in this room, which is quite a distance from where we just were. Now this is the jig for the horizontal stabilizers, and this is quite old. We've been using it for a long time, and uh, it's, it's seen a lot of parts go through here. Here's a sample of the elevator jig, and then over to your right is the vertical stabilizer jig, and that's how we take those tubes after we've cut them, 
And then after we've bent them, they go in there and they're all riveted together. And I'll show you a picture of one of the completed parts in just a moment. All right, this is where we manufacture the wings. Now when the customer gets his wing kit, the wings are actually built. They're all built. Even the ailerons are built. And if they order the optional flaps, they're built too. But what does the customer do when he gets the wing kit? Well, he takes the preformed ribs that we give him and he simply has to install each one of them. They're about 12 inches apart. He can do one wing in one afternoon or you know, if he's a first time builder, you might want to take the whole day. It's very simple. Uh, we have a video on YouTube showing how to attach the ribs. You simply gusset them at this end and we give you a gusset for that end. You drill a few holes and pop a few rivets. So again, this falls into the area where you have no parts to make and uh, no critical holes to drill. You simply put together a few things and then you cover with fabric. Now we use Superflight fabric, which we're very proud of. In our system, it is legal to go over any certified fabric. And I've had several customers call me and they say, well, we've always used Superflight or we've always used this kind or that. So I work with Superflight and, and I offer both fabrics here, Sink and I or Superflight. I just, let their, I just charge the same amount for either one and I let the customer choose. And we use the 2.7 ounce fabric, which is certified fabric. And that comes with your kit, and it's actually the easiest fabric to use, so that's why we use it. We try to give the customer the best components and accessories that we can give them. Ah, let's take just a minute to enjoy this beautiful blue sky and thank our sponsors. We are partnering with great companies like Dynon Avionics, Airworks, AirTech Coatings, Clemens Insurance Agency. These sponsors make all of this original aviation content possible. So I invite you after this video to check out the links below and say hello to our sponsors. Tell them you found them here on the Experimental Aircraft Channel. Thank you to everyone for your support. Let's jump back in. After we cut and bend and shape the aluminum that we need, we start on these tables for the fuselage. Now this table here has everything in position, the exact location for every tube and everything that needs to be part of the fuselage. Then we go as far as we can go on this table. We have more tables like you can see behind me. So we build more than one at a time. But then when we go as far as we can go on these tables, we take the aircraft off the table and we remove it, remove it back to an area behind me where we can put the plane on some wooden horses. And then we can get underneath the fuselage and do all the stuff that needs to be done underneath so that we can get it to the point where it's finished and we can ship it out to the customer. This is a very good example of how the fuselage comes to the customer. Now, as you can see, it's all put together. The only thing the customer really has to do is mount the battery in the front there, which you can see, uh, put his instrument panel, which we provide for you, at whatever height he likes. For example, one guy might want the instrument panel a little bit higher or a little bit lower for his choice, his personal choice. The controls are in for the front seat and back seat. The rudder pedals are in front seat and back seat. So you can fly. Wow. We're going to read about him in the newspaper tomorrow. The controls are in the front seat and the back seat. And uh, you can actually fly from the front or the back. Or you can teach your friend how to fly. The landing gear would then be put in place by you. It's a shock cord system. We have 24 wraps on each gear leg, and that's aircraft grade shock cord. It's made especially for us. And then of course you install your hydraulic brakes, and then you put your engine up on top of the fuselage. And uh, aside from running the fuel lines and some wiring to your engine, that's pretty much it until you get to the fabric. Now we have three videos on YouTube which show how easy our fabric is to do. 
We use super flight fabric, and we have nine-year-old children doing the fabric because so many adults over the years have told me they were more afraid of doing the fabric than anything. Can you imagine that, a grown man? So I said, look, we're going to make a video with nine-year-old kids doing this to show how foolish it is for you to be concerned because if they can do it, you can do it. Our basic kit comes with the 55-horse hearth engine, which is air-cooled. And we love Hearth, of course, they're made in Germany. And we love Rotax, too. Uh, Rotax stopped making the 503, though. That was our standard engine. So now we use the Hearth 55 horse as our standard engine. Now, if you want to get a larger engine, we have two very popular ones. We have the Rotax 65 horse 582 model. That's a water-cooled engine. We love that engine. And then we also love the Hearth, which is 65 horsepower, and it's air-cooled. Now, one option that you can get with the Hearth that you can't get with the Rotax is fuel injection. So that's a feature that a lot of people like with the Hearth. Now, some people say, well, I have to have a four-stroke engine. Well, the Jabiru is a very popular engine, and we have several of those out there on Excaliburs. And then we're also looking at other options that are coming along all the time. Uh, Brian told us this afternoon about an option that may be coming soon, a Yamaha engine that might be available, uh, 80 horsepower and such. But uh, there's also the future that might hold some good possibilities for electric motors. We're always interested in what's down the road for the future. But uh, you know, we can handle 80 horsepower or more. You can get the 912 Rotax, actually, too. That's uh, in addition to the choice of the Jabiru at 80 horsepower. You've got the 912 Rotax 80 horsepower. So we have many choices of engines. Our aircraft will take off at 40, 45 miles an hour. This design is very, very, oh, it's just been called intuitive by our pilots. They tell us that when they fly the Excalibur, it just seems to know what they want to do. It's not the type of aircraft where they have to make it turn or make it do this. It just seems to want to know what they want. And so I'll, I'll have a pilot tell me, he'll just barely move the stick and the airplane will do what he wants. It just knows what he wants to do and he doesn't have to finish the move, the airplane will do it for him because it knows what he wants to do apparently. So I've experienced that too. It's a very intuitive aircraft. But we can take off, like I said, 40, 45 miles an hour. And you can cruise at 75, 80, 85 miles an hour. I have some customers cruising at 90. Now the v &E is 100 miles an hour. And our airplane by nature is very fast, so you have to keep your eye on the airspeed indicator because before you know it, you're gonna be over 100 miles an hour. When we ship parts to a customer, we're very meticulous to check off every item on the six page inventory list. Now here, Nikki is going over the various pages and you can see she's checked off a lot of items on the pages. And we also take pictures of every single little baggie that has nuts and bolts and various parts so that that helps us to determine when a customer says, I didn't get something, we go through his pictures that we've saved and we can find that baggie and sure enough, there are the parts. So then I can email him that picture and say, look, you did get those parts because here's a picture of them right here. And that also helps them to identify the parts because sometimes they don't know what this or that is and it helps them to have a reference so they can actually see the picture and this is what they have to look for and then they call back with a red face and say, oh, I'm so embarrassed. Yes, I do have the part. I, I didn't recognize it or I, it was under a box or something. When we're finished, bending all the tubes and cutting the tubes and shaping the various parts of the plane, it comes together like this. Now this is our plane for sun and fun, which we've never been to before. But this year we're going to go, 2021, and here's what you'll see. We have to finish the painting. We're going to put stripes and so forth. Nikki will be in charge of that. She'll come up with a fantastic paint scheme. And with this airplane that you see here, we have the 65 horse hearth engine, which is one of our favorites. You can see the instrument panel is pretty well loaded with the gauges. 
uh, the seat cushions are in, the throttles are connected up and everything. So aside from the nose cone not being there at the moment, we have to paint that and install it, then put the wings on, and this plane is ready to show, and I hope you come by Sun and Fun and see it, and we can have lots of opportunities to talk at Sun and Fun. <laughs> <laughs> Speak unto me. Speak unto me. All right, everyone, so there's a quick tour and kind of a how it's made walkthrough through the shop here in Sebring. I want a special thank you to Tom. He's given me a chance to rest my voice. He has a great vo voiceover voice or narrating voice, so I just let him do the work today. So thank you for that. Well, thank you for letting me do it. <laughs> All right, so if somebody want to learn more about your aircraft through the business side of things, where can they contact you? I feel like I'm being interviewed right now. Where can they con contact you online? They can go to www.excaliberaircraft.com and our email address is there, our telephone number is there, uh, just about all the information you want. But I'd remind everyone, Brian, that on YouTube, they have to type in both words, Excalibur and aircraft. If they just type in Excalibur, they're going to get a casino, a cruise ship, everything named Excalibur. Those are things that you don't want to. Right. Yeah. So Excalibur aircraft, then they can bring up hundreds of our videos. Yeah. And bring up Experimental Aircraft Channel. Well, you've already, you're already here. We always watch it. We love it. It's very informative. Well, they're going to be at Sun and Fun this year in just uh, another month. So more questions, come see them in person and sit in the new, the new model here. Absolutely. And we'll see you there, too. And Nikki. Come hey. see us at Sun and Fun. Is this a difficult job or what? Oh, yeah, it's the worst. <laughs> Thanks for watching this week's episode of the Experimental Aircraft Channel. Remember to like, subscribe, hit that bell for future notifications. Check out our brand new website at experimentalaircraftchannel.com. And mark your calendars for Sun and Fun 2021 happening April 13th through the 18th in sunny Lakeland, Florida. I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.